Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how I airbrush a skull with some smoke flames coming off it. So let's get into that right now. So I have printed a reference image out to scale. So this is just on ordinary uh, A4 sheets of paper. So just your normal copy paper. I've then cut that out. So I've made myself a negative template, which is this one here and a positive which I'm holding on the uh, front guard of this particular motorbike. So using my positive template here I am actually just lining up the artwork so just to make sure that I've got it central and in the right spot where I want it on the fender and I'm now placing my negative template over that and then what I'll do is I'll remove the positive template, just exposing only the negative, and then I can start and spray my first tone. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a Payne's Grey. I just want to add a base colour first so that I can work on top of that and render my skull. The colours that I'm going to use for this particular skull are going to be white and I'm also going to use different strengths of transparent black. So now that I've completed the first step, which was to spray the Payne's Grey as our base colour, you'll notice that because it is a paper template, I'm not too fussed. Um, I got a little bit of overspray. It just blew underneath the template. Not a problem at all. I'm just using a water-based wax and grease remover, as uh, you could also use an automotive one if you like. Uh, and I'm just removing the overspray just with a, a cotton bud there. So... You'll notice that the cotton bud I'm using has both a regular um, end as well as a pointy end. Uh, they are quite handy having that uh, pointy section so you can get in really tight around your artwork. So now that's all done, I'm just going to use a blue tack rag. This is a clear coat tack rag and I'm just uh, lightly uh, knocking off any of the dust or anything that's left behind. So just cleaning the surface ready for the airbrushing to begin. So what I'm using here now is a transparent black. This is transparent base mixed with reducer and I've only put a few drops of black in. Just play around, um, all paints will be slightly different due to their intensity. So I want, what I want is a um, sort of a mid-tone with this one, I don't want to go too dark. So I will mix up a darker version later. And you'll see there, that's what we want to end up with. Now I'm using white and I'm just going to start to add some texturing already. Uh, I'm using a microdot template from School of Realism, designed by Drew Blair. And I'm holding that in different spots. I'm also um, moving it occasionally. So some of the blurrier textures that you can see, they were created by holding the template on the surface, spraying through it and then moving as I was spraying.
Now using white in my CMSB Micron, I am starting to add my highlights. So this will essentially become my underpainting and then I'm gonna put detailing on top of that. So you still wanna um, add as much detail as possible at this stage. So you'll notice here I'm using even some freehand templates. These are the Michael Lavalley Art Tool templates. This is pretty sure this is, yes it is, it's the second degree burn set. So the series two. So there's um, lots of good shapes and curves in this that can be used for all different applications as well as fire. Um, obviously later on in the video make sure you watch the video right through to the end because I will be adding some fire to this particular artwork. So if this is the first time watching one of our videos, welcome. I would love to have you as part of our community, so feel free to hit subscribe, tap on that bell icon, and that will notify you every time I put out new content. And also a huge welcome to all of our uh, regular viewers and subscribers. Appreciate the continued support. And for anyone that's interested in learning more about the products used in these videos, I will put some affiliate links in the description below. So it'll make it nice and easy for you to check those out.
So just keep going with the white at this stage, adding in as much detail as possible, um, using a mix of obviously freehand with the templates. So even adding um, the texture at the start is always a good idea. The more texture you add, the better. And this will carry through your layers so that when you complete your artwork, you've got that nice sense of depth and the texture sort of runs through layer by layer. If you find that you uh, have overdone it in any way, well then just um, you can eliminate some of the texture by spraying over it with certain tones and colours. Eventually it will disappear because you're doing it gradually. So a little bit further away here with my airbrush, just uh, getting quick coverage on the cranium of the skull. I'm still being relatively careful to not get too much overspray, so I don't want it to obviously be glowing. I am going to come in with fire, so I'm not too concerned about it, but I still want to keep it reasonably tight and accurate at this stage. Okay, so now that we've completed our white underpainting, I'm now going to a transparent black again. This time it's going to be almost black. So you want to mix this one up a lot stronger. You still use your transparent base. So start with transparent base, add the reducer to your liking, and then add more drops of black than you did earlier. Or alternatively, if you've got your mixed tone from earlier, just add more black into that until you're happy. So just um, spray it out first and gradually add more and more so that you don't make it too dark too quick. But you want it relatively, um, relatively dark. You still want a little bit of that transparent property through it. Um, but obviously the more and more you coat it, it's going to appear more like a solid black. It will just take the edge off it by using that transparent base in there.
So just coming in with some of those fine details, you notice I've done a bit more texturing as well. So when working up close, you'll notice that I am very careful with how far I'm pulling back on that trigger. I'm kind of going back and forth, back and forth as far as pulling back, not up and down with the air. I'm keeping the air consistent and on at all times. I'm just pulling back and forth. So paint on, paint off, paint on, paint off as I'm moving um, with those strokes. So I tend to like to um, go over a stroke numerous times. So that's why I mix up my paint a lot thinner and um, I'm quite happy to sort of hit that target multiple times to get a nice clean stroke rather than trying to oversaturate it and then you kind of lose a bit of that control and um, and also that gradual sort of softness that you may want so just mix it up to your liking and go for it So doing some fine cracks here. So again, up really close. The beauty of cracks is they don't have to be dead straight. So great to practice. And just go really close with your airbrush. And as you pull back, just keep moving with it. Try not to stop, because then you may get a build up of paint in one particular area. So it's important to keep that airbrush moving. So I'm just grabbing my original negative paper template here. I'm just going to add some shading to the side of the skull's cranium. So this is the beauty of holding on to some of your templates. Don't throw them away until you've finished your job. The paper templates are always handy to grab them again and just come back in if you need to because you know that those templates are 100% accurate to the shape and um, artwork that you're working on. Okay, so now that we've added all of our final detailing with that darker tone, I am coming back in with white, and I'm just at this stage highlighting the edge of the crack, so I'm doing the opposite edge to where my light source is coming from. The reason for this is because it is a crack, there is a dip, so therefore the highlight will catch on the other edge, not the leading edge, so not the edge that's closest to your light source, but the edge directly opposite. So that's why with cracks, I airbrush it on the opposite edge. If you're unsure, get yourself a reference. You know, just do a Google image search and, um, and you'll find some reference images of cracked rock or cracked skulls or, you know, obviously in this particular case, a cracked skull would be handy. But you can also use other things like, um, you know, like I said, rocks and anything with cracks in it. That'll give you a bit of an idea of light sourcing.
Again, adding more texture using my micro dot template. So I'm using the white now. Um, the white being opaque, it's going to sit on top of things. Be careful not to go over areas like the cracks or any other spots. I mean, if you do, it's not the end of the world. You can always come back in with your darker tone to eliminate that. But um, try and be, you know, careful with it. That way, it will save you a bit of time. But you'll notice how many times I've added texture, and that's really what's giving the the um, skull that pitted bone appearance. So it's a combination of freehand airbrushing as well as textures uh, created with templates. Just adding more texture and final highlights, also some cracks in the eye sockets. So um, remember to always sort of make them look a bit more three dimensional, don't just paint a skull's eye socket completely black, it tends to lose that three dimensional effect. So just coming in nice and close with my white, and again if I need to I'll coat it a few times, alright so I'll go over it. I'm not trying to hit it in one hit. If I do, that's great, but I just try and leave myself that control where if I want to go a bit brighter, I can just go over a few more times and that'll brighten up the color. Okay, so now that all of our highlights and our skull is complete, I want to add some fire. I'm just going to use white, so I, I like to call this a smoke flame. And I'm just going to use my template very sparingly and then continue my strokes using my airbrush freehand. So you'll notice that I kind of hit one edge and I sort of begin to draw with that 
um, that template and I kind of sketch it out. It's, it's a hard thing to get because I sketch it out as I'm looking at the surface of where I want to go with it. Um, I'll kind of visualize the, the way I want that flame to flow. And I'll also sort of think to myself, okay, if fire was flicking up off this skull, how would it travel up that, um, that fender? So it takes a little bit of practice if you need to, get yourself some reference images. So any sort of flame will do, and then you can just adjust the colouring to suit. Just adding a few little licks so that it ties in with the um, skull, so that a few sections are sitting on top and it looks like it's actually burning off. But overall this really finishes off the artwork. Okay, so here we have some images of the completed artwork. I actually put a intercoat clear over the entire guard just to seal the whole artwork in and you can see how much that's brought out all the colouring. So thanks again for watching. Until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and we will see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.